Get ready to sink your teeth into a world where vampires aren't your average bloodsuckers. Video games have given us a taste of some seriously unique and unforgettable vampire characters that go way beyond the classic Dracula stereotype. These digital nocturnal creatures bring a fresh twist to the undead scene, and they're not here to play nice. From the crimson-haired Dampir, who are flaunting silver stiletto heels, to the aristocratic blood magic user with a reptilian twist, gaming's unique vampires are turning the supernatural narrative on its head. Imagine a vampire whose power is shaped by her twisted desires, flesh crafting her way through battles like a supernatural Picasso, or delve into the world of clans and covens, where loyalty to your kindred is paramount, until it's not. But don't think these vampires are all bite and no bark. With their mastery of ancient blood magic, supernatural abilities and century-old grudges, these characters bring a new level of complexity to the eternal struggle between light and darkness. So grab your garlic, or don't, because these unique video game vampires are ready to rewrite the undead rulebook in ways you've never seen before. And just before we go into our video, we have a little request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is just a small click for you. But for us, it means an awful lot. Thank you. Now let's begin. Move by move, the machinations of fate, and thus defy the tyrannous stars. Kane. The Legacy of Cain. Get ready to dive into a game that was cooked up to tickle the fancy of grown-ups seeking pixelated adventure, with a protagonist that's far from cookie cutter and gameplay that's a mix of brain power and quick reflexes. This bad boy was designed to hook you in. It hits the scene as a 2D action adventure jam sprinkled with RPG vibes, and the critics high-fived it while the cash registers had a blast ringing. Let's talk about Cain the name you can't escape in the legacy of Kane. But don't expect a straightforward hero or villain here. This guy flips between good and bad faster than a coin toss. Kane's got powers that'll make your head spin. We're talking godlike mojo, splash of arrogance, and a truckload of manipulation. He was once a nobleman on a quest for revenge, but ended up becoming a vampire to sort out his afterlife situation. Now he's the vamp boss of the land, and authority is just a word to him. Oh, and don't even think about poking the bear, because cain has got a temper that can rival a volcano. He's got a thing for thinking he's a god and has a set of wisdom chops that give Yoda a run for his money. And trust me, this guy's not your average pretty boy vampire. He's green-skinned, fantastic, and his hair is silver blonde in a way that screams, I rule the night. His powers? <laughs> They're like a bag of tricks on steroids. Mist blending, wolf transformations, leaping across chasms. He's got them all. But let's not forget, Kane's got a history of losing and gaining abilities like he's swapping cards in a trading game. Getting wounded? No problem. He'll just slurp up some souls and call it a day. All this for a child who isn't even here. What the hell do you... Uh! You ungrateful, selfish wretch. You come into my house. Lady Alcina Dimitrescu, Resident Evil Village. You ready? This one's like playing peekaboo with terror itself. We're talking first person freakouts, but hey, they've got your back with a third person option too. So imagine you're smack dab in a frosty European village and it's not your grandma's quaint cottage. No, 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 no. This place is straight out of the history books like a relic from the Victorian era. Romania's the spot and you better bundle up because things are about to get chilling. Now let's talk about the bell of the undead ball. Lady Alcina Dimitrescu, tall, dark, and undead. She's the vamp queen that has everyone in a frenzy. She's living it up in Castle Dimitrescu with her trio of lovely blood-sucking daughters. Despite being a goner early on, this lady has some serious staying power. She's like that song that's stuck in your head and no amount of brain scrubbing can get rid of her. She's got all the classic vamp vibes, the pale skin, the aristocratic swagger, and a taste for hemoglobin. It's almost like Resident Evil meets gothic horror. Yeah, that's right. The series took a detour through the land of gloom and doom, and Lady Dimitrescu is leading the charge. Now, the origins of this vamp fam are far more twisted than, say, a pretzel. Lady D, she was once human but got a little dose of the mutamycete, a fancy term for vampire makeover, and her daughters... They're not just creepy crawlies, they're colonies of bloodthirsty bugs that decided mimicking humans was their next career move. That's like a horror movie meets entomology class.
Lord Malachi Nosferatu, The Wrath of Malachi. A horror game that's like a roller coaster through a spooky side of town. Imagine you're in the driver's seat of a first-person action thrill ride, and your mission is to storm a castle and rescue your kin in under 90 heart-pounding minutes. Yes sir, the clocks are ticking louder than a vintage typewriter. Meet our star of the eerie show, Lord Malachi, an ancient vampire with a rap sheet as long as his fangs. Back in the day, during the Crimson War, he was shackled to another dimension like a timeout. This bloodsucker's not winning any beauty pageants. His mugs in the realm of the stuff of nightmares. And get this, he's not just sucking up the late night snacks, he's after souls, baby. Sacrifice central. Malachi's combat style, it's all about up close and personal. Those claws, they're like Freddy Krueger's manicure gone rogue. He's got this lunge and pounce thing down to a science. Swipe left, swipe right, or do a two-clawed drive-by. He's got moves like a vampire ninja. His hits aren't Hulk smash level, but one swat and your weapon might as well be in another country. Plus, he's got a need for speed, so you better channel your inner track star if you want to dodge his clutches. But here's the secret sauce. To take this vamp down, you've got to get real cozy with his heart. Yes, the classic vampire weak spot. But wait, there's a catch. His skull's like a fortress for that ticker, and he's got this uncanny knack for giving you the old switcheroo, making it tough to line up that perfect shot. Oh, The Witcher. The Witcher 3 is an action RPG that's about as gripping as your controller during a boss battle. You're stepping into the boots of Geralt of Rivia, the Witcher with a knack for putting monsters on the endangered species list. And yes, he's got more weapons up his sleeve than a magician at a knife show. Bombs, a crossbow, and not one but two swords. Steel for regular baddies, silver for the supernatural kind. Now, Let's talk about those Alps. And no, we're not talking about the mountain ranges here. We're talking about vampiric dudes and dudettes who've made the Northern Kingdoms their home since the cosmic cataclysm called the Conjunction of the Spheres. It's like an epic multiverse collision. These Alps are like the cooler cousins of vampires, hanging out with Moolahs and Bruxa in the Intelligent Vampire Club. Alps might not be as buffed up as Bruxa, but they've got their own bag of tricks. They're not fans of silver. It's like a vampire kryptonite for them. Sunlight? Well, they're not tanning by the pool, but they've got a bit of resistance to it. Oh, and did I mention their shape-shifting mojo? These vamps can rock the whole woman disguise thing, but they're not limited to just that. They're the ultimate costume changers, like a supernatural chameleon. Their saliva is like a free ticket to Nightmare Town. Smear that stuff on a sleeping soul and bam, you're in for a horror show. They're the reason legends swirl about men who hit the hay healthy and wake up as white as a snowman, drained of every last drop. The Red Queen. Vampire. Jonathan used to be a bookish type with all the logic and zero superstition. One day, boom, he's a vampire. Total plot twist, right? But our boy's no pushover. His first reaction? Denial, of course. He's like, nah, this can't be real. Where's the nearest cure oil? But let's face it, he's playing the wrong game of operation cause the undead status ain't going anywhere. But hey, He's not twiddling his fangs in despair. He stumbles upon a plague that's doing the cha-cha through London town. Meet the Red Queen, the big bad causing all the infections. And yeah, she's no newcomer. This chick's been rocking different names since before history class was a thing. Now Jonathan has a plan. He's like, all right, Queenie, you're going to be my lab rat. He's thinking, if I can cure her, I can cure the whole undead gang. Smart move, right? But she's not just any final boss. Oh no. She's the true big bad, the queen of the undead, and guess what? She's got some divine connections, being all godlike and the mother of Jonathan's creator. Crazy, huh? Now here's the ninja move. She's not in plain sight. Now, you gotta work those virtual ears, chat with folks, peek at documents, and you'll get the inside scoop on this boss battle extraordinaire. Lazarus Malkoth. Dark Watch, Curse of the West, Lazarus. A Roman dude who took vampire hunting to a whole new level. Picture this, it's 66 AD and old Lazarus discovers Rome's downfall ain't just politics, 
It's those bloodsuckers. So he sets up shop with the Dark Watch Society, a group ready to go medieval on vamps. Now here's where things get spicy. Lazarus isn't just your average vampire hunter. He gets all up close and personal with darkness, like a demonic sidekick you'd find in a comic. It's a power move all right, but things take a turn for the crazy. The demon goes, I'm the captain now and possesses Lazarus. It's like a power up with a nasty side effect. And he flips the script on his own society, turning it into chaos central. He's a vampire himself, but a vampire on steroids. Dude's got muscles and glowing red eyes that could give a Christmas tree envy. Imagine a shirtless menace rocking ragged pants and flaunting a cross tattoo on his chest. But he gets all touchy with the daylight prism and guess what? He becomes more chaotic than a weekend traffic jam. He's not exactly a people person either. Scratch that. He's not a people person at all. He's the embodiment of cruelty, misanthropy and chaos and not in a fun way. His to-do list includes causing chaos and making a buffet out of anyone unlucky enough to cross his path. So basically, Lazarus is like a vampire hunter turned vampire on steroids with a demonic twist and a thirst for chaos that could make the Joker jealous. The Yarnamites. Bloodborne. Bloodborne. A place so gothic it makes Tim Burton look like a sunflower. We're striding through Yarnum, a city straight out of a Victorian fever dream, where folks are getting a bit too cosy with the bloodborne disease that's more contagious than a cold in winter. You're the hunter, the star of this grim show, determined to cure Yarnum's beastly epidemic. The cosmic beings and creepy creatures lurk around every cobblestone corner, waiting to turn you into their next dinner. Bloodborne's first half borrows a page from every gothic novel ever written. We're talking vampire vibes, and you can feel their influence in every brick and brooding shadow. But here's the curveball. Most of Yarnum's residents look like they could audition for a vampire movie. They're all about the hush-hush and have a special taste for outsider aversion. And oh boy, do they have a thirst for blood. These Yarnamites practically have happy hour with blood donations, chugging down the crimson elixir. And say hello to the Canehurst Vilebloods, the ultimate gothic hype. These guys are the pinnacle of vampiric vibes, all cloaks, castles and aristocratic snobbery. But Bloodborne isn't about vampires, no sir. It's about exploring how characters can go all vampiric without even saying the V word. These Yarnamites are living proof of that. Serana, the Elder Scrolls V. Skyrim, Serana. An ancient, full-blood vampire with a family tree that's more complicated than a soap opera plot. She's not just any vamp, she's one of the daughters of Cold Harbor, and she's like the VIP guest at the Dawn Guard's main quest party, locked away in the Second Era. Her vampire creds, as pure blood as it gets. Her family did the vampire version of a blood pact with Molog Ball, and the result, Serana and her mom, Balerica, became the daughters of Cold Harbor. But her dad's Lord Harkon, big boss of the Volkahar clan chilling in Castle Volkahar. He's all about a prophecy to make vampires immune to sunlight, and he needs three Elder Scrolls, Auriel's bow and a dash of Serana for a ritual shakeup. But mom's not having it though. Balerica's like, you're not sacrificing my girl. So she hides Serana with an Elder Scroll in Dim Hollow Crypt for a millennium long nap. Talk about helicopter parenting. Serana's not just a vampire princess, she's a wizard extraordinaire in battle. She'll whip up a zombie army from regular schmoes to powerful Dramora caitiffs. Just be prepared for ash piles, cause once she's done with them, they're toast. Vorador, the Legacy of Cain. Vorador from the Legacy of Cain series. This guy's got more centuries under his belt than a dragon's horde. Vorador's no ordinary vamp. He's like Cain's cooler, older mentor after the transformation. By the time Blood Omen rolls in, he's got the grand Pooba of vampires, the vampy version of a legend. Now, he's got this sweet spot for his vamp squad. Humans, yeah, not so much. Vorador's got a one-way ticket to Contemptville when it comes to humanity. His highlight reel, epic battles against the Saraphan, the legends of vampire hunters, and the Circle of Nine, the magic bigwigs. He's the ultimate poster child for vampire rebellion, and oh boy, he's got the goods to back it up. Magic spells, check. Sword skills that can make a ninja jealous, Double check. This guy's wielding spells like Blood Gout and Energy Bolt, showing Kane how it's done. He's not just about flashy moves. Vorador's a master of vampire powers thanks to that nifty blood curse. He's like a walking armory handling battle artifacts with the grace of a ballerina. Andre, Vampire the Masquerade. Andre, 
that Simish Vamp, who's ruling the LA Sabbath scene like a boss. Think vampire meets twisted aristocrat meets creature feature. This guy's got the whole Los Angeles dance floor under his sway, leading the Sabbath charge with an iron claw. We don't have his whole life story, but he's probably Eastern European and he's rocking some serious age. You can bet he's been around the block a few centuries. Andre's got class, like sipping blood from a crystal goblet class. But don't let that fool you. Underneath the refined exterior is a dude who's as brutal as he is inhumane. He's like a vampire Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. And oh, the perks of being at Samish. This guy's the Picasso of the vampire world, dabbing in the art of flesh crafting. Yeah, it's as creepy as it sounds. He's got the vicissitude discipline in his back pocket, making him a true challenge. Plus, he's no stranger to teleportation and blood magic, the vamp version of having a few extra aces up the old sleeve. But when things get hairy, he can transform into the Zulo form, Samisha's war mode. He's like a walking, teleporting, flesh-twisting nightmare, and he's got a thirst for blood magic that's as intense as your craving for nachos at 2am. Rain. Blood Rain series. Rain, the crimson haired Dampier leading the charge in the Blood Rain series. This lady's not your typical protagonist. She's got a vampire dad and a whole lot of supernatural smackdown on her to do list. Rain's not your everyday hero, she's part vampire, part human a dampier with a bite. But she's got a gig with the Brimstone Society, humanity's supernatural cleanup crew, where she's known as Blood Rain, a fiery-haired vamp babe with eyes that can make you forget your own name. But Rain's more than just looks. She's a whole cocktail of traits. Headstrong? You bet. Snarky? Absolutely. Intelligent? You know it. And she's not afraid to drop a few choice words while dishing out her own brand of justice. But she's a master of combat too. Twin arm blades, check. Silver steel stiletto heels, oh yeah. Chain harpoon, you got it. And don't even get me started on the Carpathian dragons. It's like her own symphony of supernatural beatdown. And when it comes to her job, she's a professional, all right. But let's be real, as long as it lines up with her interests, she's got it down to an art form. And she's as confident as a cat strutting down a red carpet. Mira. Killer Instinct, Mira Balagueros, the vampire warrior with a twist from Killer Instinct's third season. Here's a tale of twins, sacrifices and some seriously spooky supernatural stuff. Meet Mira, the night guard turned night crawler. She used to be Maya's fearless twin, facing monsters like it was just another day at the office. But things took a wild turn when Mira sacrificed herself to save her sis during a vampire vanquishing mission gone wrong. Plot twist. Now she's one of those blood suckers she used to haunt. Fast forward, and Mira's all about that vampire life, working her mojo for the true Tsar, an ancient vampire bigwig. She's got the pale skin, black hair tied up, and the golden eyes that could give you the chills. Oh, and she rocks this spiky armor getup, complete with claw-like gauntlets and a mean-looking pauldron. Before she got her fangs, Mira and Maya were a duo to be feared brave and capable as they took down all kinds of nasties. Mira's sisterly love shone when she sacrificed herself, allowing Maya to escape danger. But Mira's got skills. She's a huntress with the night guard's bag of tricks, and as a vampire she's got blood magic on lockdown. Those gauntlets of hers, the gloves of Rasavatham, turn her blood into silvery liquid metal like she's some kind of vampire terminator. She's all about supernatural attacks and abilities, making her a true challenge for the players. Marvelous Verdict In the world of video games, vampires are rewriting the rules of the undead narrative. As we bid farewell to these captivating characters, it's clear that the world of gaming has breathed new life into the vampire genre. From seductive vamps with a penchant for combat, to high-class royalties with a taste for the twisted, these characters have shattered expectations and left a mark on pop culture. As we venture forth into the realm of gaming, let's tip our metaphorical hats to these extraordinary vampires, who have reminded us that even in the realm of darkness, there's room for innovation, complexity and the unexpected. So whether you're Team Vampire or Team Slayer, these characters have left an undeniable legacy and their stories will continue to haunt our gaming memories for years to come. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't done so already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone. <laughs>